What's going on guys? Eddie here, Cornhole Bag Reviews, back again with vlog number eight, I think. But uh, it's Wednesday night, back at Super Bowl, um, going out to the blind draw that we run, running the stream, doing the vlog, playing in the Switch Holio blind draw, you know, the normal Wednesday nights, but looking forward to another fun night with uh, the group of guys out here, but planning for Triple Crown this weekend. So it's, it's kind of a good practice session. I'm playing with uh, a guy named Chris who plays with us often. He's traveling with me out to Triple Crown. Chow is unable to make the drive. So hopefully me and him can get some cash games in on the side, get some doubles practice in. He likes surefires as well. That's usually what he throws. So I got a couple different bags. We're going to try out, see what we like the most. But use this as warm up for Triple Crown this weekend. It's going to be big blind draw, singles, doubles, a three-day weekend at a casino, a bunch of cash games, a bunch of companies coming out. I get to meet a bunch of you guys. So I'm really excited for that weekend. But Stick it with tonight as a good warm up for that weekend. A couple things before the vlog. So you guys know Gladiator Cornel Glove. I love my glove, guys. I wear it literally all the time. I actually kind of can't throw without it now. Whenever I throw without it, it just feels weird. But if you want to try out a glove, they're pretty affordable. Click the link in the description below. Code Eddie10 for 10% off all of Gladiator's website. Help support the channel and gives you guys a little bit uh, for you guys. And I also got a bunch of patches in. If you guys are curious, I got some patches with, uh, you know, my logo for the channel. If you want any of those, shoot me a message on Facebook and I'll be doing some bag collabs that I got coming out as well and whatnot. So a bunch of stuff coming for you guys. I got a lot of plans for 2022. I'm going to be trying to travel more, do more of these vlogs. I really like the uh, the gameplay and getting connecting with you guys. Some of you guys have already come up to me and said you watch the videos and really enjoy them. It, it, it always is fun to meet you guys. So never feel like I like you can't come up and talk to me. I'm always excited to uh, meet you guys and hang out and so hopefully I get to meet more of you this weekend at Triple Crown. But heading out to Super Bowl, I'll catch up with you guys uh, once I get out there. All right, guys, we are back at Super Bowl. First thing I want to show you, check out this sick custom hoodie that I got. I'm thinking about doing a hoodie drop. If you guys are interested in possibly getting some of these sick hoodies, let me know and I'll actually do a drop. I just got one for myself to test it out, but they look awesome. But we're at the venue. Uh, smaller showing today, 17 people, I think. Uh, you know, we'll start out usual like knockout. They'll do the four rounds of pool play. It is freezing cold today. I bet you it's negative eight plus wind. It's probably negative 15 wind chill right now. It is really, really cold. So try to make these recordings quick today outside. But, uh, you know, we'll do the four rounds of pool play. Again, try to do well in pool play. Practice for Triple Crown. Uh, and then uh, hope we shoot good. And it's just fun hanging out with people, hanging out with the stream. Uh, talk to some of you guys. But all right, I'll catch them with you guys uh, after round one, and I'll also do knockout highlights after this, and then I'll talk about the knockout too. So catch you guys soon. With about 10 people on knockout, we'll fast forward to top four. We're Jerome here, a little bit short with his Omega, and uh, we got Randy behind him throwing the surefires up in top four. And Randy's able to put it up right up the middle and in, so knocks Jerome out, so we're left with Clyde, Chris, and Randy. A couple rounds later, we now got Clyde up. Clyde throwing the contraband cutthroats a little bit too hard off the back with those fast bags. And Randy again with the surefires up the middle to knock out Clyde. So we're down to two between Randy and Chris. After Chris misses, we're now in sudden death. If Randy makes it, it's over, but he misses off the back right. So now Chris gets a chance to end the knockout here. And Chris is able to put it in to win the knockout. So nice for Chris to get that win. In the very first round of Pools Game 1, I'm shooting against Randy, against Jerome and Clyde, but Randy starts with his first one up the middle nicely. We're playing on the stream court here. Uh, we're throwing some prototype deadheads. They're throwing surefires. I miss mine off the back, and Randy's able to make the second one. When I miss the second one off to the side, and Randy makes the third, I'm definitely in a world of hurt here. I need to finish up. I make the third bag. He finishes up the four-bagger. I had to go in to limit it to five, which I do, but still give up the 12 to seven. So we start down the game five to zero. A couple rounds later, after two washes, it's still five to zero. Clyde's got first bag, starts with his first one up the middle and in. Jerome's first bag ends up going off to the back left. And then Clyde actually throws a really nice block, getting in Jerome's way. So Jerome tries to go around it, but pulls a little left and actually goes into Clyde's bag and pushes it closer to the middle. So a nice blocker from Clyde. When Clyde goes off the back right here, Jerome is going to try to push through, but misses off to the left again. So giving Clyde an opportunity to push through his bag here and clean up for a 10-point round. But when Clyde pulls it off to the left, Jerome's got the whole hole open, so he decides to try to go for an airmail. Misses a little short and actually knocks Clyde's bag in, so it's an 8-5 to five round for them. So now they start up the game up 10-0. A couple rounds later, the score is now 13-3. to three. I have first bag and miss my first one off the right side. 
Randy gives it back though by going off the back, so then I'm able to slide in the second bag to keep the pressure on. After Randy's bag kicks off to the right, I have a big opportunity when I make in my third bag. Randy follows me in, but still down two on the round. I'm able to finish up for the nine after missing my first bag, and his pushes off to the right. So nine to five round, we get four more points, so now we're only down 13 to seven. After Jerome gets one point, we're now down 13 to eight. I still have first bag. I start with my first one a little bit off the left, barely catching the hole, but probably out of play. Randy misses his off to the left as well, giving it back to me, and I'm able to throw my second bag kind of front left in his way. He bumps into it and clogs up the hole just a tad. So, but both my bags could possibly go if I push it hard enough. I'm able to push hard through and knock in both me and Randy's bag, but one of mine hangs on the hole. When he misses off to the right, though, I could clean up this bag as it's sitting on fast side to try to get in for the 10. I go here for the airmail and actually hit an airmail drag on the back bag. And when he misses off to the front right, it's a 10 to 6 round. We get four more points. So now we're only down 13 to 12. Jerome gets us one more point, so we tied the game up 13 to 13, and it's my turn to give away a big one. I start up with my first bag in the middle, Randy's able to follow me, and the wheels kind of come off here. I miss my second one off a little bit to the right, Randy bullies it out of the way. Miss my third one off to the right a little bit, Randy's going to bully that one out of the way again. And I go for a cut collect and miss off the right side of the board, and he's going to finish up for the four bag. So 12 to 5 round, give him 7 points, so we go down 20 to 13. A couple rounds later, after I get a three, we're down 20 to 16. Jerome's got first bag. First one a little bit off the back right, and Clyde's able to capitalize up the middle. Jerome's second bag here, again, a little bit off the right, and possibly could fall off the board with a nudge. Clyde's stays consistent right up the middle again. Jerome able to get it back on the third bag, and uh, Clyde gives it back to him a little bit off the right. So Jerome needs to finish up here just to force Clyde to miss. If Clyde goes in, they win the game. He's able to make in his last bag for the 10 to 8 round to get two more points. So we lose the game at 22 to 16. Alrighty, round one of pools done. We lost on the stream court. We lost 22 to 16 to Hot Ass Randy and Clyde. Randy was shooting really good. Had like an 8.8 .8 in our game. I shot five, 7.8. Had a nice airmail drag, but I also gave up two big rounds. I gave up a five and a seven, but whatever. First round, warm up. At least we got 16 points. Ain't too bad for the pool play. But we'll try to get it back in uh, round two. So I'll check in with you guys after uh, round two. In the very first round of game two, we spun and got first bag. So I start with the first one as a nice blocker. It's going to be a common theme in this game. He really likes to just slide up into the hole. So I really try to take advantage of the blocker. He pushes off to the side. It gives me a lane to push through. I actually miss off the left a little bit, but my blocker still stays in. He knocks me in with another bag off to the left, giving me an open lane. I take back over the middle again, forcing him to step out to possibly try to go around. His third bag, he actually throws a really nice get around, forcing me to try to clean up. I'm able to push in and replace again. So up eight to five on the round currently, force him for another difficult shot just to wash out the round. Goes for the airmail, but misses it short to the right. So ends up being an eight to five round to start. Shows the real power of a blocker there. We get three points to start, so we start up three to zero. The very next round, Clyde's got first bag. He starts with this first one, barely hitting the front of the board off to the right. So kind of out of play, but could get in Clyde's way going into the later bags. Bill misses his one right off the left side and Clyde's able to go over his bag nicely to make his second bag. After Bill front boards the second bag up four points, Clyde could have taken advantage but ends up going off the back and giving it back to Bill. So Bill trying to negate damage here, misses off the back right, and then Clyde bounces right over the hole, unable to punish again. So Bill can go in here to limit it to one, but ends up going off the right side. So it's a five to one round, four more points, so we start the game up seven to zero. Fast forwarding four more rounds, the score is now seven to two. Bill's got first bag and goes whole high off to the left. Clyde is unable to punish and actually gives Bill a bumper with that short right bag. Bill doesn't use it, uses his own bag, was able to make it in the second. After Clyde misses off the board in the second bag though, Bill's up three on the round. Takes away Clyde's bag, but not really in play. Clyde takes over the middle and Bill decides to step out here to possibly try to go for a left or right get around for the eight point round. Throws it, throws a really nice get around shot. So now up eight to two on the round, forcing something tough from Clyde. Clyde throws a nice push, but it kind of jams up. So it's the eight to three round, giving them five points. So we tie the game back up seven to seven. The very next round, they now have first bag where my opponent starts with this first one nicely up the middle in the hole. 
I again go for the block here as it's been really effective this game so far and it works nicely. He pushes me a little bit closer and preventing him from sliding. I go to try to clean up my bag with a hard push. I end up knocking one in and replacing my block. Basically what I was exactly what I was trying to do. He then has to try to go through my block again. Misses off the right. Now with my third bag, I go for a big cut push. I'm able to make my third bag and drag my second one even closer to the hole. Basically I'm just guaranteeing he's going to go. He ends up knocking mine in with a bag off to the right. I go for an immediate step out left to right cut and cut nicely around his bag for the four bagger. So the 12 to six round, getting a six more points back. So we go up 13 to seven. Three rounds later, we're now up 16 to seven. I still have first bag. Start with my first one, again going for a block, but I slide in the right side of the hole that time. On his first bag, he follows me up the middle. Second bag, I actually miss off to the left a tad, giving him a bumper. Definitely a missed bag. He capitalizes with a nice block up the middle. I go to just try to push through, push through nicely. Got kind of lucky using my bag as a bumper to slide in the left side. When he misses off the back, I know all I have to do is make it in to capitalize. I'm able to finish up for the 10. So we can go in here for the nine just to negate it to one, but ends up missing a tad off the right. So it's a 10 to seven round, getting us three more points, putting us on 19 to seven. The next round Clyde's able to get us six points. So we win the game 25 to seven. Alrighty guys, round two done. Uh, we won that game 21 to like 10, eight or something like that. I feel like I shot pretty well in that game. I had like three straight four baggers. I just decided to start making bags and trying, but we're shooting over the board, which I haven't been doing in a couple days. Took a little bit to get used to it, but the bags we're throwing, I'm throwing Minnesota tailgate prototypes. So I work with the guy and put together four different prototype bags, like kind of like a surefire, like a deadhead, like a viper. But these were the, I threw the deadheads in the first game. I threw the surefires in the second game. Uh, they feel awesome. I am super stoked to uh, try these out. They feel like full 2020 surefires for a super cheap price. So uh, trying out some prototypes, uh, I think they're gonna be sweet. So I'll be bringing those to Triple Crown to have some of you try out hopefully. But uh, we won the second game. So hopefully we can keep, uh, keep the tides rolling in the game three, but I'll catch you guys after round three of pools. So the first interesting round of game three is round three. We're up one to zero, so we got first bag where my partner starts with his first one off the back right, and his opponent ends up missing off the left. So both those bags are dead. Uh, his second bag is able to go up nicely, and Jordan here throws a little bit of a short left block. So my partner steps out to the right, definitely has a lane to use if he can use the bumpers, throws it just a little bit deep, so kills that one off his back bag as well. So he could finish up here for the eight, He's able to throw a decent blocker though in the way, leaving up the six. So it is a six to two right now after his opponent went off the side. Goes for the airmail, misses off the left. So we're looking at a six to two round, getting us four more points. So we start the game up five to zero. Fast forwarding six rounds, the game is now we're up seven to five after a couple of small and wash, small rounds and washes. So they got the first bag here and we're still up seven to five. Jerome starts with his first bag up the middle in the hole nicely. I'm able to follow him up the middle. Jerome then throws his second one off the back to the right. So I have a big opportunity to score here. I immediately go for a block here. Nice block. He throws a nice push and replace. I go to try to just block behind. I actually throw a nice short block behind, forcing him to go for the airmail. He ends up pushing me a little closer, and I look at my partner and say, is the hole open? And he said, yeah, but he's hanging, so you maybe shouldn't shoot it. I try to go aggressive, hit the back hole airmail for the nice 10-4 to 4 round, giving us six points. So big jump. We take the lead now at 13-5. to 5. After my partner gives up a couple points, three runs later, we're up 14-10 to 10 now. Jerome's got first bag. So Jerome starts with his first one in. I'm able to throw another nice blocker, kind of the theme I was going for tonight. He pushes up behind, so immediately gives me room to go for the left to right cut I've been practicing. So the first bag is a really nice left to right get around. He goes to try to push through, ends up knocking me in. Once again, I go again for the left to right get around. Hit another nice get around, two in a row. He goes to try to push everything in, jams him a little closer. So here I kind of step back and I was like, man, I want to go for the airmail to win up nine to five right now. My partner's telling me I should go for another left or right get around. From the angle that I had, it just looked like I was going to push him in if I went for the get around again. Um, so I end up stepping out and going for the get around, but erring on the short side here because I just really didn't want to knock him in. I figured if I lay on, I just get to take my five. So 
My partner really wants me to shoot the kid around again. I go kind of for it, but again, just miss it a little bit short. Take the 10 to five, no reason to be overly aggressive. So we take the lead 19 to 10. My partner is able to get three points the next round. So I win the game 22 to 10. Okay, round three done. I'm doing it in this echo chamber because I it's so cold. Like. I normally don't get cold. I'm like freezing actually, so I don't really feel like going outside. But we won that one, uh, 22 to nine, seven. I don't know. I don't really remember. I shot against Jerome. We had a four bag wash. I hit a nice air mail for six points. Uh, had a couple. Had a couple really good rounds on them. But uh, shooting pretty good. Still throwing those prototype surefires. Uh, they feel really solid. Um, it's cool to uh, to work with him on a bag and, and then you know kind of bring it to fruition and it feels really really good. So. Played with that game three, probably doing pretty good in the standings. The fact that we got we got like 25 points the second game, at least 16 the first and 22 the third. So should be getting a good chunk of points. There's a lot of people winning a lot of games right now, though. So I don't know, maybe be in the top three, four, if we can win the last game. So hopefully we can win round four, get ourselves a decent partner. And then, uh, I mean, it's all about bracket, right? So I feel like I definitely haven't been playing the best that I could play because it's not bracket yet, it's pools. So maybe I'm just not focused enough, but I should be. But you know, sometimes it's hard when you're just hanging out and talking to people you haven't seen in like a week or so, so a couple of weeks, but either way, having a really fun time. So I'll catch you guys after uh, round four. In the very first round of game four, it's me and Chad versus Randy again and Bill. Chad misses his first bag off the back right. Bill then throws his first bag nicely as a block, forcing Chad to block behind. But missing off to the slight right, the block did a good job giving Bill a good avenue to push here. He pushes his bag a little bit closer, and Chad tries to sneak around but ends up a little bit back left. I don't know if that bag will be pick upable or not. But when Bill misses off the side, Chad, I tell him to just go for the airmail, and he hits a really nice clean airmail, not touching Bill's bag. So Bill's got to go for another left right push here. Misses off to the right a little bit, bag stays on the board. So we get a nice 6 to 3 round to start, take a 3 0 lead to begin the game. After I give up one and Chad gets two, we're now up five to one to start the game. I have first bag. Start with my first one off to the left a little bit. Randy definitely could sneak around, but when he ends up front boarding, gives me an opportunity to score here, but I don't capitalize. I miss my second one off the left again. His second bag, he goes for a roll shot, hits a nice little left to right kind of roll uh, bag in the hole, and then I keep building the wall to the left. He goes for another roll bag. It rolls, but it misses off to the left. Now I can finish up to get a six here, and I'm just unable to throw it where I want to throw it and miss off to the right. And he throws one more roll shot over the top of the pile nicely, so he gets the seven to four round, get him three points back, so the score is now five to four. Fast forwarding three rounds, the score is now eight to six, and Bill's got first bag, misses his first one off to the back left, and Chad's able to capitalize going up the middle to take a two point lead after one bag. Bill is able to follow him nicely. Chad stays consistently up the middle. These boards are playing a lot faster than the side boards, so both throwing sure fires. After Bill front boards the third bag, Chad misses his a little bit off the left. Bill could bully this out of the way, but his third bag catches the back lip, so he ends up with a five. Chad steps out to go for the big four bag push here and is unable to pull that in with him. It still makes the fourth bag for the 10 to five round, get us five more points, so we're up 13 to six. The very next round, I have first bag, and I start with my first bag. Looky that, in the hole. A very surprise for this game so far. But Randy actually misses off the back left, giving me an opportunity here. I'm making the second one to capitalize. He follows me in, but I'm still up two points going into the third bag, and I finally give it back off the back. He throws his, and it hangs on the hole, so I go to just try to push through. I actually make mine in and don't knock his in, and when he misses off to the left, he ends up giving me a... 10 to 6 round for four more points. So now we're up 17 to 6. After Chad gets one point, we're up 18 to 6. I got the first bag. I start with my first one as like almost a block. It could get pulled back on the left side, but Randy happens to get the front board. I'm able to throw a nice little cut to collect it. After Randy goes off the back, I'm already up six. I'm able to capitalize by getting the third bag in. He throws one away. And I'm unable to finish it up, but he ends up just throwing his bag off the back. So it ends up being a 10 to 1 round, giving us 9 points. So we take the game 27 to 6. Alrighty, round 4 of pools done. It's still freezing out, but I'm warm enough I think I can do this. But uh, uh, we won the game 25 to 6 against uh, Randy and Bill. Me and uh, me and Chad, we were throwing surefires on the stream court. 
But uh, I had a pretty decent game that game. Uh, nothing too crazy. Didn't have to do anything hard. But getting the 25 points, we actually ended up in first place overall out of the standings, which is cool to get a first even with a loss. Just a lot of big, big 25-point games. So it's actually going to be me and Clyde. I've played with Clyde before. Uh, he could be really on or really off, and that's just how bracket works, you know. So if he's running hot in the bracket, we can make a run. So um, I don't know what we're going to throw. The sideboards are really slow. The stream court is lightning fast, like double the speed. So might be throwing something faster on the side courts and then maybe some surefires on the stream court or something. Um, but we'll see. So uh, I'll catch you guys after the first round of uh, bracket. In the first round of winner's bracket on the stream, I get paired up against Chow, my doubles partner. So I start with my first bag up the middle and in. He answers nicely. Playing on the super fast boards, we're both throwing surefires. I miss mine off the right. He takes advantage by making his second bag. I make up my third bag. He makes it in nicely. I'm able to finish in for the 10, and he quickly makes his four bagger to start. So 12 to 10 to start. We go down 0-2. Fast forwarding five rounds, we're now down six to one. Chow's got the first bag and lays a really nice blocker. I go to try to push through and end up missing off the left. Now Chow doesn't usually like pushing through his own blocks. He usually likes when I do that, but he goes to push through, pushes through nicely, but knocks his bag off the back right. But I give it right back to a missing right, giving him a canal. He hits it nicely. I then use the canal as well, making up the middle. He's able to miss off the right for an eight. So I can go in for the wash here and throw a terrible bag. Kind of going, actually going for the airmail drag here to try to stay aggressive, get some points back. But we end up giving up an 8-6 to six round for two more points, so we start the game down 8-1. to one. The very next round, down 8-1, to one, Jordan's got the first bag and starts with a nice blocker. Locksworth really well against Clyde. He tries to push through, but misses off to the right. Jordan then pushes and replaces really nicely, taking advantage of the entire center of the board. Clyde then misses off the right side of the board. This could be a big round. Thankfully, Jordan gives it back on the third bag. But when Clyde misses off to the right again and Jordan finishes in with the nice push, we're looking at 9-2, to two, and then it ends up being a 9-3 to three round. So giving up a big 6. So now we're down 14-1. to one. Fast forwarding a couple of rounds. We're now down 17-2. to two. Definitely needs to be go time now. But they have first bag. Luke starts with his first one nicely up the middle, staying consistent like he has all game. Uh, I can't really miss anymore because we can't give up any more points. Uh, my partner's struggling a bit, so I make the second bag. When he misses off to the right, here's my opportunity to score. He makes it his third bag. I'm able to follow again, so at least guaranteed two if I make my last bag. When he misses short right, I'm able to sneak around the left side of it for a nice 12 to 8 round, get us some momentum back, so now it's 17 to 6. Very next round, Clyde's got first bag, and he starts with his first bag. A little bit deep, bounces off the hole, but that one is out of play. So opportunity here for Jordan, but pushes it off the right side. Could fall off the side of the board. Clyde's second bag is hanging on the left side of the hole. Could definitely be pulled in. Jordan throws a nice blocker taking over the middle. Clyde pushes through it. Both of his bags now hanging on the hole, probably going to fall. When Jordan taps in him, he actually knocks his off the side, and both the Clyde's get knocked in. So Clyde's laying a seven here. Is able to sneak around nicely for the 10. So currently 10 to 4. And when Jordan goes off the back, that's a 10 to 4 round. Six more points. Momentum fully swung back in our direction. And now the score is 17 to 12. After I get a messy two points, it's 17 to 14. Clyde's got the first bag here. Starts with his first bag up the middle with a really nice block getting in Jordan's way. Jordan then pushes him a little closer and gives Clyde room to go around. Nice bag by Clyde, knocking his bag in, jamming into Jordan's, giving Jordan room to get around, though. That gives Clyde a nice canal, pushes and replaces beautifully, now lane 7-2. to two. When Jordan throws a really nice push-up bag, I actually tell Clyde, he misses off the right here, but I tell Clyde that's actually not the worst bag to miss because both of Jordan's bags are hanging right in the hole, and Jordan, unable to hit them to knock him in, ends up being a 7-4 to four round, giving us three more points. We've tied the game back up from 17-2. to two. Now it's 17-17. to 17. Very next round, with all the momentum in our favor, I got first bag here, and I start my first one nicely up the middle and into the back of the hole. Luke answers me nicely. Now here, I throw a little softer and go for the block, Perfect middle block. He jams into me. I step out and go for the get around push. I hit the shot I wanted, but jam up into him. He goes for the block behind, and I immediately line up for the airmail. Try to hit a big airmail here. I throw it nicely and hit a huge three-bag drag airmail, 
and start dancing on him because I know that he's getting, my partner loose. Got to hit a two bag push here just to prevent the game from ending because uh, two bags left on the board is the four points that we need to win. So Luke is basically talking to me like, I can't believe that you just hit that, and I can't believe we're about to lose a 17-2 to game. So tries to focus up here, gets ready for a big push, flips it over to fast side on the surefires and throws the push shot. Knocks one of his in, but misses off the back for the 12-7 to round to make the huge comeback, so we win the game at 22-17. to all right, so we just played round one of bracket on the stream. Holy shit, was that an epic comeback? We were down 17 to two. Clyde was really struggling early, probably averaging like a three or a four. And then uh, finally loosened up a little bit. He started turning it on, started getting tens, eight, started scoring. I started scoring on Chow, I was shooting at the double spurner. I had like three straight four baggers. I threw a block. We had a messy round, but I threw a three bag airmail at the end, uh, a block block, and then I threw a three bag drag to force him to try to push two bags in, which he wasn't able to do to get the last four points to win. We came back 17-17, and I got four points at the end with that three-bag drag to win. Oh, that feels good. It was such, especially beating Luke, because he's my doubles partner. So I, I got I got fuel, I got clips to send him now for the next couple weeks now that he uh, he lost that way. So nice win, whatever. So uh, we got, I don't know, win two more games to make chair or something. Whatever, keep running it up, it was fun. That's a good one, and uh, I'll catch you guys after round two of winners. In the first round of winners round two, we're shooting up against a pretty solid team here in Randy and Jerome. I feel like I've played against Randy like six times at this point, but I missed my first bag off the left. He takes over the middle of the board nicely. I miss off the left again. He still has middle control and cleans up the push. After I build the third left wall, thankfully he doesn't use it and misses. I go for the right to left cut and take over the middle of the board, but he goes for the roll shot here. Luckily, it rolls on top of my bag, easily could have rolled over the hole, but starts nicely with an 8-4 to four round, so we're down 0-4 to four after the first round. After my partner gives up a 1, we're now down 5-0. to zero. Randy's got first bag and misses his first one off the left. So opportunity here, I start with the first bag pretty quick up the middle, I'm able to make it. We're throwing contraband cutthroats. My partner wanted a faster bag, so trying to control him as best I can. He blocks, I block behind, he goes for the roll and misses off to the left. I go for the airmail and hit a nice airmail, not touching his bag, forcing him to go for the roll or airmail again. He goes for the roll and his bag lays on the side of the hole. I decide to go for another airmail and I hit the nice airmail, but I happen to drag him with me. So ends up being a 10 to 6 round, but I get the four points back that I gave in the first round. So now we're down five to four. After my partner gets two, we're now take the lead at six to five. I got the first bag and I start with the first one off to the left. Randy follows me though, giving me a chance to take back over the middle of the board, which I do nicely, forcing him to try to push through. He misses off to the right, leaving me the middle of the board again. I go for the big push, take everything with me, but I'm able to finish up. He makes his third bag and I go for the right to left cut, nicely around his bag. He tries to clean up his, but misses off the back. So it gives me a 10 to seven round. So we take an even bigger lead now up nine to five. Three rounds later, we're now up 11 to five after I got another two. My partner's got first bag and misses a little bit off the back right. Jerome finally comes alive and makes his first bag up the middle after my partner hits the front board and Jerome is able to make his second bag. Pressure starts to mount as we're down five on the round into the third bag. Clyde comes back nicely, making in his third bag, and Jerome gives him one back. So definitely a chance to save the round, but after Clyde misses long and knocks both his bags off, and Jerome finishes up, we're looking at the 9-3 round, giving him six points to tie the game up 11-11. to Fast forwarding four more rounds, we're now down 15-12 to after we traded a couple points. My partner's got first bag and starts nicely up the middle. Jerome then follows him as well into the hole, and my partner misses his second one off the back. So big punishment with the fast bags as they slide deep. Jerome's able to make his second bag in, and my partner's able to follow nicely. Jerome stays really consistent, throwing a really nice block, which is effective against Clyde. So Clyde goes for the airmail, misses a little bit off the side, so ends up with the seven on the round. Jerome then going for the big push. Is able to push his in and knock Clyde's off. So it ends up being a 10-6 to 6 round, giving him four more points. So now they're up 19-12. to 12. After I get us two points, it's now 19-14. to 14. We have the first bag. Clyde starts with his first one off the back right of Ted. Definitely not going to be able to grab that one. Jerome stays nice and consistent up the middle. And Clyde has another one catch the back edge of the hole. That could be pulled back. 
with the fast bags, but then Jerome jams up into him. Clyde then goes off the back, opening up an opportunity here for Jerome. When he gives it back, Clyde can get in here for the five, forcing Jerome to make his last bag, which he does, but Jerome can go in for the win and does just that without taking Clyde's bag with. So it's the eight to five round. They get the three points they need, so we lose the game 22 to 14. Okay, round two of winners done. Uh, we lost 22 to 14. We played against Chad and Jerome. Uh, we were up 11 to six uh, or 11 to five. Um, Clyde gave up a big six. I uh, just kind of, the wheels kind of fell off. Um, you know, I feel like I was shooting pretty good. That's just how it is in blind draws, you know, just uh, your partner's got to be shooting good too. So we lost, not a big deal. We'll move down to loser's bracket. Hopefully we can make a run up loser's bracket. Got to play a lot of rounds. The next round is against Matt and the ghost. Ghost rounds are always tough because they can get on a hot streak and they're the only partner. They don't have to have a partner to rely on. So hopefully we can win that one. Uh, but either way, having a good time. If I lose, I'll be doing commentary on the stream, playing cash games, you know, doing that kind of stuff. So uh, no worries either way. So uh, we lost that one, but dropped on a loser's bracket. I'll check in with you guys after losers round one. We're starting at losers round one in round five, down four to one. Pretty uneventful first four rounds, just one and two there. But we're playing against the ghost. So Matt throws his first bag in the short right and Clyde ends up going off the back. Matt here then throws his second one, loops around the back of the hole, could easily fall in. When Clyde misses off to the back left, Matt just tries to try to bump him in, but misses off the right. Another opportunity. When Clyde hits the board, he's off to the right. Matt goes to try to finish in, ends up knocking in his back bag and blocking up the middle. So Clyde trying to push through, ends up tapping in Matt's last bag. So kind of worst case scenario in that last bag, ends up with an eight to three round, giving Matt five more points. So we go down nine to one. Very next round, Matt's got first bag against me and throws the nice one up and in. They're throwing sh Birchberry Surefires and we're throwing the cut throws. My first one goes along off the back right. Matt throws a decent blocker. I immediately go for the big right to left cut. Miss a little bit to the left, but jams up into his bag, so a decent miss. He then goes off the back, taking my bag with. I ask Clyde, do you think I can cut this or do you think I can push it? What do you want me to go for? He tells me to go for the get around again, so I immediately go for the right to left cut and throw an actual nice cut collect, leaving his bag behind. Perks of fast bags for sure. He knocks his bag in to finish up for the seven here, and I have a nice open board to finish up for the nine, get the nine to seven round, two more points, hopefully swing some momentum back in our direction, but we're down nine to three. The very next round, Clyde gave up a three, so we fast forward to me now down 12 to three. Matt's got the first bag, starts nicely up the middle with his first one, and I try to follow suit up the middle. Matt then gives me an opportunity with the missing one off the left, but what do you do? You follow him off to the left, so I give it right back. Makes his next one up the middle, and I stick up the middle as well. He's able to finish up here, and I have to go in for the wash and end up pushing it a little to the right. For the 10-8 round, I give him two more points, we're down 14-3. to three. After my partner gives up two more, we're down down 16 to three. Matt's got the first bag and he starts with his first one up and in nicely. I'm able to follow him up the middle, trying to keep up with his pace. When he misses off to the side, I want to put some pressure on here, making in my second bag. So trying to get some momentum back, he's able to follow back with the third bag. I miss off to the left and he's able to finish up. So now I ask Clyde like, do you think I could even get this? I asked Matt, do you think I could get this? Like, it's way outside. I didn't even tell Chad, like, is that even collectible? That's kind of like past the hole outside. And Chad's like, well, you kind of have to go for it. Like, you need the points and you got to score. So I step out for this ridiculous, ridiculous left to right cut. The bag's like almost past the hole. Go for it and somehow grab it for the 12 to 10 round to give us two points. So now we're down 16 to 5. After my partner gives up another three, we're now down 19 to five. Matt's got first bag, makes one up the middle nicely. And here's just where having the ghost, you know, you just get so many more reps in every round. I miss one off to the right. He's able to bang in the second one. I'm able to follow, you know, these bags a little bit quick for me, so I ain't falling through as hard. He makes in his third bag and I give it back off the back. He makes in his fourth bag and I just go for the airmail for fun, pushing them all off the back, but... We end up giving up a big round there, so we lose the game 21 to 5. Alrighty, so round one of winners, and I'm out. Bye bye. Tournament over, which is fine. You know what happens. Uh, we played against Matt and the Ghost. I think I might have given up four points. Um, and, you know, he goes down there and scores 17 on my partner. It's just 
not much you could do. It's blind draw. Um, you know, you get the partner you get. If I would have gotten second place, you know, I would have gotten, you know, X person, whatever. So it's just one of those things. I get first place in um, pools. That's all I can do. End up with a person that's not, you know, super on in certain games, which is totally fine. But either way, I feel like I shot well in the day. I think I'm over an eight average, somewhere around there. I feel like I'm shooting good, which is fine. Good warm up for Triple Crown. I'm excited to go to that. But uh, I'm going to be hopping out. I'm actually going to go inside. I'm really cold. Um, I'll be hopping on the uh, stream, doing commentary, playing cash games, you know, all the fun stuff. So either way, I'm excited to do, to do that. Talk to some of you guys. And um, But if you're around at Triple Crown this weekend, I guess this vlog will come out after Triple Crown. So if I've talked to some of you and met some of you, patches, all that kind of stuff, thank you. It was fun to meet you guys, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But appreciate you guys stopping by for another vlog. Uh, I like doing this stuff and I uh, hope you enjoy it. The weekly content, the Wednesday night streams, the, you know, the, the, the watching my travels here. I, I guess on the plus side, I wasn't one out of the money. I was like three out of the money today, <laughs> which is worse, but you know, less, less, uh, less bad taste in your mouth kind of thing. But Appreciate you guys stopping by for another vlog. I'll catch you in the next podcast review, vlog, whatever the heck that you guys like to watch. Appreciate all the support and the views, but hope you guys have a great day and rest of your week, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys.